Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. I hope that everything is going as well as can be expected with all the things that are taking place simultaneously in the world around us. One thing that I can tell you uh, without question is that you're going to be faced with challenges your entire life. How you address and deal with those challenges is going to be the determining factor in the outcome of your life. Will you be recognized as someone who came, who saw, who conquered, or will you be recognized as someone who became overwhelmed and consumed by the world and the circumstances and the situations around you? There is no circumvention of life life's vicissitudes. There's no circumvention of struggle, pain, heartache, disappointment, frustration. There's no circumvention of dealing with external forces that work towards your detriment and demise. That's a part of life. It's not in the avoidance of all of these things that will determine your success. It is in the successful engagement of these things. So, we are in a challenging time. I'm not going to get into everything that's going on right now, but I will say that we are in a challenging time and it's our responsibility to find the best way to rise because within us is the capacity to overcome. Within us is the capacity to elevate. Within us is the capacity to push through. What we have to do is not become so focused on what's going wrong that we lose sight of our own internal divine power that is there for us to do exactly what we're facing. We're here to win. We're here to overcome. We're here to be uh, change agents in this world we're here so that we don't leave the world in a in the same condition we found it we're not in we're not in this world and in this place and in this time to succumb to all of the things that are pressing against us we're here to rise up and leave an impact a legacy and so I'm challenging you to live your life on full. I'm challenging you to be everything that you are designed and capable of being. I'm challenging you to look beyond the things that you are facing right now in this life and understand that you're built for the battle. Um, I, I can't tell you how many times I've faced some things in my life that people thought were going to take me out. I've faced some things in life that people thought would be the final straw that would wipe me out. And then they were looking at me down on the line and asking how I'm like I'm built for this I look myself in the eye in the mirror literally and tell myself Rick I don't even know how you're going to get out of this but you're built for this I don't have to have the answer to know that's why my spirit remains quieted that's why my spirit is never shaken and uprooted I never become frenetic and unglued because I know I'm built for this I don't care what I'm facing I don't care what I'm going through I'm built for it and so this isn't even the reason that I got on here, but I had to share that with you because we're going through so much. And if you consistently allow the pressures of life to press against you and you don't have a way of dealing with it, facing it, coping with it, confronting it, it will take you. It will press you. It will put you in a position of depression. It will put you in a position uh, of hopelessness. It will put you in a position in which you can get nothing done of any true intrinsic value. That's not why you're here. So I just want to encourage you. I want to challenge you. I want to I want to put you stand up, live your life on full. I, I say this almost at the end of every video that I'm going to live my life on full so that when I leave this place, I die on E. I'm challenging you. Die on E. And what does that mean? What does die on E mean? Die on E means that when I leave this place, there will be nothing, there will be nothing left undone. There will be no untapped in and act unactualized potential. I, whatever I put here to do, I plan on doing it. Whatever it is, every book 
written, every speech and lecture done, every class and, and program design completed and implemented, every person's life that I'm meant to touch, I'll touch. Every situation that's needed to be done with my wife and my children will be done. I will not sit idly by and let life pass without me putting my imprint upon it. And that's what I'm challenging you to do. Now, with that out of the way, I'm here to talk and give my insight on the Kanye West thing. And you know me, I'm not here for the sensationalized part of all this bull crap that's going on. It's never me. I'm here to take the teaching moment out of it. Uh, and so I, uh, that's what I want to do with you today. Don't forget, while I'm here, we are working on, and, and the good thing is, Mary and I are going to be coming back live uh, a little later on in the day to talk about family and the importance of family and how that plays a role in properly and holistically preparing our children uh, for a future of winning and success in a world that is inherently hostile towards them. So we're going to get into that a little later on today. So I want to remind you that I want to <clears throat> remind you we need your support uh, for the work we're doing in the community in so many different areas. If you followed me for any time, you know the work we do. Uh, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, Restoring Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, uh, Black Man Lead, Rite of Passage Program, uh, Black uh, Empowerment Initiative, the Blueprint 1.0, uh, designed to lay out in full the uh, the blueprint and design and graphic of how we overcome and win instead of just singing about it talking about it wishing for it we need to start living it and it's on the site and, and you can check it out and I'm looking for other minds to come together so that we can put our minds together and we can start confronting these things with actionable steps but we need your support so go to the description of box of wherever you're watching this and uh, look at the way that you can support the work we're doing uh, and you can do that through a number of different ways but it's always going to be that first paragraph in the descript description box okay uh, yesterday I shared with you brother Riza Islam's uh, perspective on Kanye and in a nutshell brother Islam said that man you know first of all we got to stop paying attention and responding and reacting to everything that Kanye says um, because we know it to not be true, we're wasting a lot of energy on addressing him and blah, blah, blah. And something else he said was we need to be aware and we need to consider the fact that Kanye is suffering from some mental challenges, that there are some mental health issues on deck and that they've been there for a while. And we need to be aware of that. And because of that, we shouldn't be giving any real true gravity to the statement he's making. But we should also consider, um, you know, not necessarily giving him a pass, but, you know, not going at him and attacking him or whatever. Um, my quick assessment of Brother is uh, Riza Islam's um, approach to this is I agree that there's obviously something going on and uh, obviously I haven't spent enough time around him to do a true assessment or diagnosis of what it is that he's confronted with but there are definitely some issues he's dealing with and they've been there quite a while while some want to um, pinpoint the death of his mother as the beginning of the problems I can look back and see that they were actually there before that uh, definitely his losing his mother exacerbated it and there hasn't been a strong uh, stable environment in which he can find what he needs in order to start the healing process uh, as much as possible um, so that's been a problem uh, so I, I acknowledge that. Uh, but at the same point in time, I'm not one for passing out passes for those who specifically target my people, uh, regardless of what state of mind they're in. Uh, this brother is a genius, and he's a genius enough to have accumulated enough to be classified as a billionaire right now. He's a genius enough to have created one of the most successful careers uh, in his industry and to have established longevity 
uh, within his industry. Doesn't mean that there aren't mental health issues. There are definitely mental health issues. What we need to stop doing is using mental health as an excuse for poor behavior, poor performance, and realize that we have a bunch of black people and specifically black men who are suffering with mental health issues. And that's what I would rather talk about than to specifically sit up and debate on where Kanye stands, what his run for president, which I'm not even addressing, um, and so much more. What we're looking at is we're looking at, and I've talk, talked about this especially over the last year, the fact that we have an increase in uh, mental health issues, uh, depression upon black men, uh, so suicidal ideation, suicidal attempts, and suicides among young black males at a rate uh, that is higher than that uh, traditional uh, percentage. And so we have to start asking ourselves what's going on, and we need to look into it, and we need to deal with it. We have far too many black males that are being becoming violent uh, against their significant others, intimate partner violence, and intimate partner homicide. We have to start addressing this. We, we love to point the finger after the fact. And I believe it was Frederick Douglass that said, it is much easier to build strong men than it is to, prepare, to repair broken ones. We've got to stop screaming uh, bloody murder after the fact. We need to start understanding, and there there is a lot of empirical and pragmatic evidence and data available to show us what's going and how. I have gone to great lengths to present to you um, the need for proper racial socialization for young males, because in the absence of proper racial socialization, uh, we see a heightened proclivity towards violence and criminality. It is directly linked. We can see the link. We understand it. We can even now use the uh, we can use the adoles uh, black male adolescent respect scale created by Dr. Jarda Grew to predict uh, violence in young black males. So we understand that that it's it's an issue with feeling disrespected. We understand it's an issue with not being properly racially socialized. We also know that there are some common. Uh, some other common factors involved, such as being a victim of violence, witnessing violence, and uh, urban uh, hassle. Urban hassle is living in a community where you hear gunshots all time of the night, uh, sirens all time of the night. You've got to navigate uh, through drug activity and gang activity to get to school and to get home from school. In certain areas in the Midwest and the East, you've got L trains running all time of the night, shaking the apartment. Uh, you've got so much within that environment that actually messes with the nervous system and creates a heightened sense of agitation and increases the, the proclivity or the risk of violence. But the two primary factors that exist are the feeling of feel, of uh, the feeling of being disrespected the belief that one is being disrespected is the number one cause for violence in young black males uh, the second is the lack of proper racial racial socialization it is almost impossible to deal with the first one because the black male is put in so many different situations where he, that he's either been convinced and conditioned to believe that what's happening to him is disrespect or he's actually in situations where he's being disregarded and disrespected. That's the truth. But where we can work is in the area of socialization. Socialization is the preparation uh, to take the right mindset and behavior to move into um, a situation uh, in which you thrive in a social environment. It is preparing young black, in this sense, in instance, is preparing young black males to properly navigate a system and an environment uh, and a culture 
that is designed to destroy them, that is designed to marginalize their impact and to mitigate their force. It is to prepare them to be responsible, it is to prepare them to understand their roles and their relationships with black women. It is to prepare them to understand their roles and relationships with their progeny. It is to prepare them to undertake the daunting task of pushing through racism to win. And if we don't do that for them, they end up in this environment of feeling hopeless, helpless, and angry. They they, they get to a point where their bodies tend, uh, are, are starting to go through a physiological change anywhere between 9 and 12, where they're starting to see an increase in testosterone, where they're not a, now witnessing that they're growing at a more rapid pace and, in, in strength and size than their female counterparts, uh, where they are witnessing a significant difference in strength from their female counterparts but also with that comes a level of aggression that they cannot explain and they and if you don't have them in a program if you don't have them in an environment in which they can understand that that aggression isn't meant to turn on their female counterparts it isn't meant to turn on the elderly it isn't meant to turn on one another it's meant to give them the proclivity and the desire and the willingness to go out and use that newfound strength, size, and, and, and power to defend, to protect, to cover. And if it's not there, they tend to become hypermasculated in a sense that now they are expressing what they believe to be their manhood in violence. And that's the responsibility of men who understand how it's supposed to be done, who understand why your voice is changing, why you're becoming more muscular, why there's this sense of edge to you now that comes with testosterone that feeds an aggression that you don't understand. It needs to be explained. That aggression is meant to be housed until the need comes to protect. It's not meant to cause unnecessary harm. It's not meant to vent your emotional despair. It's meant to rise up and fight out. That's so important right now, but we're not, we, 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 we're, that's what the Black Men Lead Rite of Passage program is about. But when we look at a situation where we've got so many black males out there that are trying to figure out, you don't know how many calls I get a week, primarily from mothers, who are telling me about their sons and they're afraid and fearful that they're losing total um, connectivity with their sons. They can't get them to do anything. They're not listening. They're becoming disrespectful. They're becoming even becoming violent. Uh, some of them, they're worried about them becoming violent towards themselves. And the truth of the matter is all of this can be addressed, but we're going to have to create a system. We're going to have to be responsible for creating and managing the resources that allow us to properly socialize, mentally prepare, socially prepare our men and our, our black boys and our black girls to become black men and black women who are socially productive, collectively productive and individually productive. It's a responsibility primarily held for parents within the family. And that's why Marion and I are going to have that talk with you guys uh, a little later on in the day, uh, because we're missing in that too. And we don't understand the importance of the traditional family nucleus and why it is wreaking havoc on us as the, the decline continues. So, when I look at Kanye, he's a microcosm. You know, he broke down doing his video the other day where he said that crazy stuff about Harriet Tubman, not going to even address it. Uh, uh, I think anyone who studied history knows. Uh, I think anybody that understands social dynamic and racial dynamic understands what's at play right here. Uh, I'm not going to get that. But what happens is he's, he breaks down in that same video when he starts to talk about his father. Again, an absent black man that does not play a vital role in the development of his son's identity, in the development of his son's wherewithal and understanding of who he is. And then there's this idea of why is this happening on a grand scale? Because there are 1.5 million black men who aren't on the scene. 
Uh, some of them by choice, a lot of them have been taken away uh, because of criminality, uh, because they fell victim to a social and strategized culture that's designed to capitalize on their poverty-driven criminality. And this, is, again, is not providing any type of excuse or pass for behavior. One is always responsible, but we also understand that you can follow criminality very closely along the lines of poverty. Poverty will drive people to do things that they would not normally do in order to survive, in order to eat. When a man's desire is to feed his family and there is no job and there are no programs to help him, he will result to whatever is necessary to feed his family. Those are the three ways that you feed your family as a man. You have income, either as an employee or as an entrepreneur. If that's not the case, then you have to have some social program, which do, does not, in this country, especially when it comes to black families, uh, tar I mean, provides resources to black men at a level that allows them to provide for their family. In fact, most of the programs are targeted at the women and, and require that the man not be present in order to get the full benefits. Okay, so again, there's no job there, and, and, and Black men are purposely underemployed and unemployed. We are the highest underemployed and unemployed population uh, per capita in the U.S. Okay, so it's, it's not always easy to get a job, and when we get a job, it does not provide what is necessary to provide uh, a lifestyle for our families. Second of all, there are no programs in great, uh, uh, in great, in a grand way for uh, helping us and supporting us until we can get on our feet. That leaves crime in all of its different ways from fraud to uh, uh, what else? Fraud, drugs, gambling, and the list goes on of everything and stealing, robbing, everything else that goes on in the crime industry that comes back uh, to money. And so what we've got to be able to do is we've got to prepare them first and foremost. One of the most powerful elements of the socialization outside of how we deal with our women is how we prepare to take care of our women and children. And that's by focusing and teaching a, a centered idea and notion of business ownership. Taking control of what it is you want to do in life instead of waiting on or begging someone to give you an opportunity. Anytime you're waiting on someone to give you an opportunity, you're at complete mercy of that person or that entity. When you decide I'm going to go out and make a way, I believe it was George Bernard Shaw that once said that those who get on in this life, regardless of race, those who, are, who get on in this life are those who wake up in the morning go out and find the opportunity they need to take the next step in, in climbing the ladder of life. And if they don't find the opportunity, they create one. That's life. That's period. There's no excuse. There's no way around it. You cannot sit around your entire life waiting on someone to give it to you. You definitely cannot sit around your entire life waiting on those who benefit from your oppression, benefit from your poverty, benefit from your impotence to come along and give you an opportunity to rise out of it. That's foolish. And that is definitely something that does not pay in the long run. We've done it too often. We're consistently waiting on someone who benefits from our demise to rescue us. It's our responsibility. It's up to us. So I just wanted to touch on that. We've got to deal with mental health on a grand scale. We need resources in all of our cities so that we can touch young men. We need the rite of passage program black men lead is completely designed to touch and to be um, networked and created and pushed out in all cities so that there's a network of cities working together so that no one's disconnected that we're all working together we all know what's going on with each partic particular city what's going on with their young men where are they at and we also need to have programs that help and aid single mothers who are raising young black men and don't get me wrong we're not forgetting the young black girls that's why we have my wife and i have restoring ghettos forgotten daughters we we haven't forgotten them but we're talking about this massive problem we have with mental health 
we we understand that the largest population of people suffering with depression are young black women. We understand that. We're not forgetting any of it. We are attacking and addressing it all. But we've got to start somewhere. And on that note, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. I want to ask you guys to support the work we're doing once again. Uh, as I get out of here, go to the um, go to the description box. Look at the first paragraph and decide how you want to to give. On that note, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Get out of here. Be looking for Marion and I a little bit later uh, as we prepare to bring you. Uh, what we have on the disintegration of the black family nucleus and what we need to do uh, to begin the process of restoring it and how important it is to restore it. On that note, I'm out of here. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group. I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.